So hello everyone, uh, welcome back to our latest uh, lecture session, right? So we have been discussing I believe acidity in uh, great detail in the last class and prior to that we discussed alkinity. So obviously you know we are going to look at the applications, right? Uh, as in how you are going to you end up using alkinity mostly, we will have maybe a minor uh, application with respect to acidity. So primarily today's session we are going to try to understand how to apply acidity with respect to various scenarios, right? So let us uh, get right down to it. So initially or you know what have we been until uh, doing until now, you know in our acid and base systems, what kind of problems have we been looking at, primarily recipe problems, right? Uh, recipe problems as in uh, you know what did we look at, let us say I uh, considered different examples or all the examples that we looked at th so far have been, you know I know what it is I am adding initially as in let us say I know the amount of acid I am adding initially or amount of base I am adding initially and I am using Wiemann-Tech or the component balance approach you know solving it out manually to be able to calculate the relevant species at equilibrium, right. So what have you been up to? So let us look at a minor example let us say you know I know H2CO3 not present initially or Na2CO3 not present initially, right. So from that we are trying we calculated either H total or CO3 total and NA total and either we use Wiemann-Tech, right or by hand or component balance, right. And then what did we solve for primarily we are trying to find out what will be the equilibrium concentrations right. So this is what uh, you know we uh, discussed in general. So this will work fine whenever you are looking at engineered systems right you know let us say I am uh, conducting an experiment I know what it is that I am putting in initially I want to know the pH uh, that would uh, that I would expect or the alkalinity that I would expect or acidity I would expect and so on right. So that will help with your engineered systems. But let us say if I am looking at uh, say let us say natural systems or real world systems or the different kinds of uh, problems you would uh, routinely face, what are they for example? You know let us say I have water quality analysis, right? What parameters will they have? They will have let us say pH, alkalinity expressed as CaCO3 or equivalence but rarely equivalence, people end up in India anyway using uh, the units of as CaCO3, right? And then we need to end up estimating let us say or we might need to end up estimating what are the relevant uh, concentrations of uh, the species. For example, let us say you know if you look at a water uh, quality report let us say what would you have uh, let us say, uh, let us say you will certainly have pH and other than the physical parameters let us say you will also have alkalinity and let us say you will also have phosphate but it is not phosphate right, it is total phosphate that people end up measuring right. So you have let us say what now pH, alkalinity and total phosphate but let us say I want to be able to understand what are the uh, concentrations of the relevant species at equilibrium right or what are the different species present and what in what concentrations how do I do that? Because here let us say we are not saying we are inputting so and so solutions uh, and then I want to calculate what the or not uh, calculate estimate more or less right uh, what the equilibrium concentrations are going to be. Here let us say I have a solution and the pH, alkalinity and the relevant total component uh, concentrations of various uh, what do we say components are given. For example in this case I mentioned uh, total phosphate right. Uh, how do I estimate the uh, concentrations of the relevant species? So that is what we are going to look at in greater detail. So this we are going to look at as water quality problems. Until now we looked at recipe problems. I know I mean I know what it is my recipe is as in the recipe solutions. You know one example is what we looked at when we added H2CO3 or Na2CO3 initially and I wanted to know okay what are the concentrations of H2CO3, HCO3 minus, CO3 2 minus, pH etc at equilibrium this is what we calculated until now right yes uh, but in general what do we face we face uh, scenarios let us say where we have let us say pH uh, we have alkalinity given right and then we also have let us say for this example x total but let us say one example can be total phosphate uh, present right and then let us say we are trying to estimate let us say what are the various uh, species at equilibrium right. 
So obviously we are going to look at alkinity in this particular case and then we are going to move on to more complex systems but uh, one step at a time I guess. So this is the case again. So again uh, as we know I guess right what is it about you know what is our approach about it is about more or less being able to calculate the total components right. But here if you look at this system we have pH and alkinity but uh, we are uh, we do not have the relevant components there or total components pardon me. But we obviously have one other uh, total component we have uh, phosphate total here let us say or x total in this particular generic example right. So how do I go about estimating the equilibrium concentrations right. So what am I missing here? Obviously if you understand what it is that we have been up to we were earlier trying to transform the recipe concentrations and express them in terms of the total component. So here we do not have that we have pH and alkinity. So what can I get from them or what information can I glean from them right. So obviously if you are looking at component balance we obviously need to try to find out the H total and CO3 total. Why? Uh, alkinity in general we look at it in terms of the carbonate system and thus we are going to look at CO3 total right. So first we will try the manual approach as in how to express you know or how to let us say calculate CO3 total given pH and alkinity it is relatively simple obviously and then we will also see how to use Vimintech which obviously you know cuts down on the time required right. So first aspect is that you know it is a closed system right when you have no uh, exposure of the relevant solution to the uh, atmosphere right no gaseous phase present. So here we are going to consider a case where we have pH alkinity and x total and what am I trying to calculate I am trying to calculate the equilibrium species the concentration I guess the concentration of various equilibrium species. So how do I go about that first manually I guess right. So alkinity what is our equation with respect to alkinity now we know that it is going to be equal to uh, what is it here please OH minus right and the other bases are HCO3 minus plus 2 CO3 2 minus minus H plus right and how can we simplify this further let us say uh, we are trying to express everything in terms of uh, variables such that we can end up with H total and uh, CO3 total. So obviously I need them in terms of H plus and CO3 total right. So let us see how I can transform that so alkinity is given right alkinity is given in our particular uh, case and pH is given so I want to express in terms of H plus so OH minus we know is KW by H plus and where does this come from because you know the water can dissociate into H plus and OH minus and the water dissociation constant is going to be equal to H plus into OH minus right. Again just to uh, you know refresh our uh, memories fundamentally what is it KW equal to activity of H plus right and activity of OH minus by activity of water but activity of water right and this dilute systems is going to be equal to 1 and we are approximating the activities by concentration so right so that is where we end up with or that is how we end up with this particular equation and minus H plus right and how can I express HCO3 minus and 2CO3 2 minus in terms of uh, CO3 total now. And obviously as we know right we looked at the ionization fractions so alpha naught is nothing but uh, H2CO3 concentration by CO3 total and similarly the first second and third ionization fractions in this case are what are they HCO3 minus by CO3 total and CO3 2 minus by CO3 total. Right. Again uh, just to refresh your memories uh, we talked about this you know I guess quite some uh, sessions ago uh, this as in the ionization fractions. So what do these ionization fractions give you an idea about obviously as we just uh, try to uh, jot them down we understand that each ionization fraction will give you an idea about uh, the relevant uh, protonated or deprotonated form in terms of the total acid concentration right. So for example the relevant species for us are HCO3 minus and CO3 2 minus so how can we express them as alpha 1 is equal to HCO3 minus by CO3 total and alpha 2 is CO3 2 minus by CO3 total and what is CO3 total now? You know, in general CO3 total if you write it down in this case should be equal to HCO3 minus plus H2CO3 plus CO3 2 minus right total acid concentrations in this case anyway yes. So anyway uh, let us try to use that here so that is then going to be equal to how do I transform these two variables going to be equal to alpha 1 
plus 2 times of alpha this is alpha 2 pardon me right alpha 2 into and from this set of equations you know into CO3 total right. So, what do we see here given that you have the alkalinity and given that you have pH or H plus you can end up calculating the CO3 total right. You know that alpha naught pardon me alpha 1 and 2 alpha 2 are you know constants for a given pH. So, you can calculate them they are more or less constants given that you know the pH and the relevant system which in this case is carbonate system. So, here with the uh, pH and alkalinity right we end up calculating the uh, CO3 total and once we have that we can also calculate H total right. So, once we have H total CO3 total and X total we have the relevant uh, total components right. So, once we have this obviously what can we solve for we can solve for the species or the concentration of species smaller species means what are they the compounds present at uh, equilibrium right. So, we are able to solve that this is manually the right, but again solving that manually is obviously going to take some uh, time right. So, let us look at one particular uh, example or such where we are going to use Vimintech, uh, but you know we should always be able to understand the basics behind it and we will see why later on when we look at a minor example I guess right. So, here we are going to start looking at uh, Vimintech right and let us say let us take a particular case let us say when pH let us say is uh, 7 right and alkalinity let us say is 30 milligram per liter expressed as CaCO3 right and let us say my x total in this case let us say PO4 3 minus total is equal to let us say 0 0.01 molar or molar units uh, which we are approximating is equal to molar units in Vimintech. Uh, if required we will change this uh, later, but for example let us take this down. So, you can uh, either use the units of alkalinity as CaCO3 uh, we will see how right or we can transform that and how do we transform that is equal to 30 milligrams of CaCO3. I try to express them in terms of the relevant compound so that it is easier to understand per liter of water right. If I want to transform that into equivalents per liter, so I am going to divide that by uh, I know that it is going to be 50 milligrams of CaCO3 per 1 equivalent I guess right. So, where did we get this from calcium carbonate uh, the molecular weight is 100 I guess right 40 plus 12 plus 3 times 16 is I guess uh, 48 right 48 plus 12 is 60 yes 60 plus 40 that is equal to 100, uh, but we know that you know it is uh, CA 2 plus and CO 3 2 minus if they can dissociate into that right. So, more or less we end up with 2 equivalents uh, right per 100 grams of CA CO 3 right. So, there is more or less 1 equivalent per 50 grams of CA CO 3 right. Anyway, that is the uh, what we say background here. So, that we end up with 30 into 10 power minus 3 by 50 equivalents per liter. So, that is equal to 3 by 5 is 0 0.6 or 6 into 10 power minus 4 equivalents per liter, right. So, that is something that we just have as a background. So, let us now switch out to Vimitech, right, and understand the system. So, again, what do we need to do? Uh, let us switch back what do we need to do here. So, we have the pH we have the alkalinity right uh, we may take cannot uh, calculate whatever it is that you want uh, randomly. So, what do we need to do initially we obviously need to calculate what is the CO3 total right. So, how do we do that let us look at that. So, let us switch. So, here what was our pH I think we said pH was 7. So, the pH I am going to fix it at ok 7 that is the value that we already have here and we know we have alkalinity. So, let us go to specifying alkalinity as you see here you have different units as milligram per liter of HCO3 minus HCO3 2 minus CaCO3 or milli equivalents per liter. So, I need not have uh, transformed the units from milligram per liter of CaCO3 to milli equivalents, but anyway for understanding we did that. So, that is fine. Uh, so, we transform that into equivalents per liter right. 
So, and that we end up with 6 into 10 power minus 4 which is 0 0.6 milli equivalents right hopefully I am right and uh, normal we will go through this particular case later again pH 4.5 is because you titrate it to pH 4.5 and normal definition here you can understand the difference if you want to. So, I plug that in. So, and now I run Wim intake uh, the number of components is equal to the number of fixed species ok. Obviously, I see that there is an issue there because you know, as expected right. So, let us go back to the Wim intake menu and view edit list. So, let us say something else needs to be given here right. So, I need to give uh, back to uh, main menu uh, let us say and also let us say I am going to have NA plus. and act guess I will try to see if we can let the system guess ok. Again a visual mean tech a species including the input file as fixed possible finite or was not or excluded was not in the thermodynamic database. So, I think let me understand the system here ok. So, CO3 2 minus NA plus back to main menu let me add H plus I think that is the reason why we are ending up with an error let us see where is H plus here ok add to the list view edit list let me try if this should hopefully uh, solve this issue or I think I still need to add the uh, CL minus we will come back to that anyway one good way is to learn by uh, what do we say what we are up to. So, anyway looks like because I did not have H plus or deleted H plus by error we end up with an issue right. So, where do we have the particular uh, let us look at species distribution once. So, uh, pH 7 you would have assume that or you would expect that everything would be present as HCO3 minus. So, that is what most of it as uh, of CO3 total is present as HCO3 and that is what you see here 81 or 82 percent is present as uh, what is HCO3 minus and H2CO3 is 18 percent of the CO3 total right that is what you would expect when the pH is 7. Back to main output menu and now here let us say uh, where can I get the uh, CO3 total here please. So, I can go back to uh, species distribution uh, not really or now I can sum up the CO3 total from here right uh, CO3 total will be equal to CO3 2 minus H2 CO3 and H CO3 minus. So, I can sum up these 3 values and then I will end up calculating my uh, uh, CO3 total right. So, that is what I can see from here and view species distribution pardon me display saturation indices this is when we have to look at let us say saturation or precipitation and dissolution which we do not go into right now. So, now from this particular graph I can end up calculating uh, not graph pardon me from this particular set of values I can end up calculating the CO3 total right uh, CO3 2 minus H2 CO3 and H2 HCO3 minus the sum of them will give me my CO3 total. So, uh, I inputted pH at 7 alkalinity at 0.6 equivalents per liter and I can calculate my CO3 total right. Uh, for uh, uh, sake of ease uh, let me just take it as uh, this is what we say 10 power ok 6 point HCO3 minus is let us say this is 6 I will say it is 7.2 into 10 power minus 4 you know let us say you know because 7.2 into 10 power minus 4. Let me take that and then try to plug in the relevant values it is not equal you can use the excel and get the relevant values right. Uh, so, again what are we up to here uh, I am trying to calculate the uh, component balance uh, in terms of uh, CO3 total and because uh, excel or pardon me Wim intake cannot do that uh, by itself we plugged in pH and uh, in parameters we plugged in alkalinity in the terms of equivalent per liter units. And then looking at the relevant species I can calculate the CO3 total right. Uh, so, let us uh, come back to this obviously I can print it to excel uh, and get the relevant uh, what do we say uh, species concentration. So, if I go back to main menu view it list. So, earlier I made the error of you know having inadvertently deleted H plus that is why we uh, looked at an error right. And uh, where are the output files ok here are the output files. So, you can look at the relevant concentrations here and calculate that. So, now I am going to change it such that how do I change it uh, that I want to also put in phosphate total right. So, let us see how I can go with that specify alkalinity let us say now I am going to say no 
there is no alkynity specified in the solution right view edit list and now CO3 total is going to be relatively uh, uh, what was it I think 7.4 right 7.2 into 10 power minus 4 right uh, so let us plug that in here CO3 total back to main menu and CO3 total and the key let us say I will use uh, millimolal so if I use millimolal I just need to plug in 0 0.72 millimolal right and so here I am going to plug in 0 0.72 and add that to the list and what else do I have here please I also have phosphate and what is that that we said was 0 0.01 molal uh, that is a bit of a high concentration so let us look at that later. So now pH is not fixed anymore let us say calculated from mass balance let us say. Let us see if that will work out not really I leave the pH at 7 because I know it is at 7 and PO4 3 minus PO4 3 minus and I said I am going to use it at a molal concentration of 0 0.01 right or to make it uh, you know relatively similar I am going to change it such that it is 0 0.001 or 1 uh, millimolal right uh, otherwise it might be way too high. So here I have uh, 0 0.002 H and so on back to main menu and pH is fixed at 7. So now I can calculate the relevant concentrations of the relevant species which are H2PO4, H3PO4. HPO4 2 minus which I was unable to do earlier. So I look at the relevant uh, species distribution right. So CO3 2 minus it is present obviously at 82 percent in HCO3 minus and PO4 3 minus is present as HPO4 2 minus and H2PO4 minus right. So let us just summarize what we were up to right back to input menu. So keep in mind that we change this particular value to make it similar. So again uh, manually we saw how to do that so again let us summarize pH and alkynity we plug them in initially right and then we end up from this particular information calculating CO3 total and we already have PO4 total right and using this information right and also fixing the pH at the given value which was pH 7 I then ended up calculating all the species concentration and what were they H3 PO4 right H. 2 PO4 minus H PO4 2 minus and PO4 3 minus and so on right. So this is what uh, we can do so obviously we need to transform it such that we get the first component uh, that we need to look at and then go through right. So this uh, we are done with this for now so let us move on to an open system right and where is that so open system I guess and what is this about so when this case is when you have your particular system here but it is you know uh, open to the atmosphere or the gaseous phase let us say right and here you can have what do we say as we know uh, transfer of carbon dioxide or CO3 total between the gaseous and the aqueous phase. So for this we looked at the relevant uh, uh, what do we say uh, transformations and such earlier obviously we are not going to go through that but we are going to look at relevant applications I guess right so let us let us see. So obviously here instead of uh, CO3 total right which we did in the closed systems obviously we are going to try to express our terms uh, our alkynity in terms of partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So let us see how we can do that I think we might have looked at a minor transformation earlier. So we know that alkynity is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 because it is 2 times CO3. 2 minus into CO3 total plus KW by H plus minus H plus right and anyway, what is this equation though this equation is uh, when uh, we have uh, alkynity initially I guess you know this is the alkynity equation for initial cases but let us say now you have carbon dioxide that is in equilibrium with your particular system. So well uh, what do we need to do now I guess so that is the case. So here we have alkynity here and we have let us say partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So how do I go about this particular case now right. 
So again, the key aspect that we need to consider here is that uh, from what we discussed a couple of sessions ago, we know that alkalinity does not change when you introduce carbon dioxide into the system or remove carbon dioxide from the system, right. So uh, how was that or why did we come up with that? Alkalinity was equal to uh, what now? OH minus and the other bases are HCO3 minus plus 2CO3 2 minus minus H plus right and we saw that when we bubbled carbon dioxide it can go to H2CO3 or H plus and HCO3 minus or it can directly let us say also go to 2H plus and CO3 2 minus. So, if we plug in the relevant uh, variables we see that you know 2 CO3 2 minus and minus H plus or HCO3 minus and minus H plus. So, they cancel each other out right. So, again uh, if you remember uh, what we discussed uh, introducing or removing carbon dioxide from your particular solution will not affect alkalinity. Obviously, the pH is going to change right, but it is not going to uh, change the alkalinity. So, this is the key here as in the alkalinity before and after equilibrium with your gaseous phase is going to be the same right. So, let us use that. So, let us say if I assume that if equilibrium with CO2 is achieved right, the alkalinity is still going to be the same right, alkalinity is same. But obviously, I want to transform CO3 total into uh, uh, what do we say partial pressure of CO2. So, CO3 total I want to express it in terms of partial pressure of uh, CO2 right. So, in this case we looked at one particular aspect earlier. So, I think we talked about H2CO3 right and that it was equal to what now uh, in terms of CO3 total it was alpha naught into CO3 total right. And then we talked about the Henry's constant KH, right? And then we tried to uh, solve for it. Henry, Henry's constant, what will that give me an idea about partial pressure of CO2 by concentration of H2CO3 in the aqueous phase, right? So that is going to be equal to partial pressure of CO2 by uh, alpha naught into CO3 total, right? This is something I believe we looked at previously. So, KH is going to be equal to PCO2 by alpha naught into CO3 total, right. But depending on the units, let us say if it is K dash H, wherein it is the units are moles per uh, atmospheres, this is then going to be equal to alpha naught into CO3 total by partial pressure of CO2. Again, the key is that the units are going to be or can be different, right. So, you need to look at the units whenever you are looking at the Henry's constant, right. Again to refresh our memory, we are just trying to use Henry's constant to get a relationship between uh, partial pressure of CO2 and CO3 total, right. And what does Henry's constant uh, give us an idea about? It gives us an idea about the concentration in the gaseous phase of a compound to the concentration of the compound in the aqueous phase. In this case, we are talking about CO2. So, we say that Henry's constant depending on the units is either going to be the partial pressure of CO2 in the gaseous phase to the concentration of H2CO3 in the aqueous phase or if the units of uh, the Henry's constants are you know uh, vice versa as in uh, or the inverse let us say as in if it is uh, moles per liter per atmospheres it is going to then going to be Henry's constant or K dash H is going to be equal to H2CO3 concentration by partial pressure of CO2 right. So, I believe we used this particular term earlier. So, I am going to continue using this. So, how can I express alkinity here? So, alkinity is now going to be equal to alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 into right uh, where do I have that. So, I have CO3 total. So, CO3 total in this case is equal to K dash H into partial pressure of CO2 into alpha naught. So, that is going to be equal to uh, CO3 total is equal to K dash H into partial pressure of CO2 uh, by naught into alpha naught divided by alpha naught obviously right partial pressure of CO2 by alpha naught plus Kw by H plus minus concentration of H plus right. So, in this way we can simplify the particular system further and you can solve for the relevant aspects right. 
So again, uh, we just tried to, this is the manual approach. So uh, we are obviously going to look at how to get that done if it is, uh, what do we say in the, uh, if you are trying to use Vim intake, right. So again, what have we done here? We just tried to express CO3 total in terms of partial pressure of uh, CO2. And why is that so? Because this is an open system as in the, uh, what do you say, your solution is open to the gaseous phase and there can be a transfer of CO2 or CO3 total obviously, right from the gaseous to the liquid or liquid to the gaseous. So that is the re reason we looked at alkinity and again why alkinity because alkinity does not change when there is any exchange of CO2 between the gaseous and aqueous phases, right. So let us uh, try to uh, use Vimintech and try to look at a particular scenario, pardon me. So let us go back to Vimintech and see how we can uh, go through with that. So now uh, let us edit the list from what we were up to earlier, right. So I am going to view edit the list, I am going to delete this. I am going to delete this for now and back to main menu and so I am going to say there is pH and alkinity, right. Enter pH and alkinity, specify alkinity and there is alkinity now and let us say it is present as 30 in my case 30 milligram per liter as CaCO3 which we looked at earlier, right. So okay and uh, pH is going to be fixed at 7 let us say for my example, right and view edit list, okay. So, it already obviously calculated the case for that. Uh, back to main menu and then uh, run Mintic, right pH 7 and so on, yes. And we can get the CO3 total from here, H2CO3 and such. So, obviously from here what can I calculate? I can calculate, so by plug in pH and uh, what is it please, alkinity. I can then end up calculating H total and CO3 total, right, from Vimintech again. And now what I am going to do, I am going to enter CO3 total, H total and now give a partial pressure of CO2, right. Let us give a random value there and then we can come up with our particular, uh, you know, case I guess. So instead of uh, calculating the aspects, I am going to you know uh, go ahead and get that done with some uh, random values. Obviously, you can calculate H total and CO3 total here. So back to input menu and view at list. So you hopefully this should even might uh, turn out to be the same. And what next here? Uh, we are trying to input CO3 total, H total, and PCO2. So strictly speaking, I need to calculate that from the previous uh, particular uh, Vimintech uh, output but I am going to use random values and see how we can go through, right. So H total, CO3 total and PCO2, let us go back to that. So here now parameters, I am going to say there is no more alkinity now, right, uh, because I am going to input uh, CO3 total, right. But gases, I know that I need to specify gases, how do I do that and pressure. So I am going to change it, let us say that it is going to be two times, let us say, than what I would expect in the atmosphere. What is this tab here? So it says specify the fixed CO2 partial pressure and atmospheric CO2 pressure is given, you know, which I am going to say is constant. But in my case, I am going to say the partial pressure is two times what I would expect in the atmosphere. So that is what we see here, enter the partial pressure of CO2 as a multiple of X above. So I am going to say it is going to be equal to twice of what I would expect or let us say go with thrice of what I would expect in my atmosphere, you know, this is a hypothetical example I am looking at. So I am going to click add and uh, back to main menu. So I need to also give the uh, CO3 total, right, CO3 total, where is that, CO3 total and let us say, you know, I am randomly going with uh, 0 0.001, add to list, right, view edit list, yes, back to main menu and run min tech, okay. So because the charge is not balanced, so it is going to take Cl minus at particular concentration. And now I can end up with my relevant, uh, you know, aspects after PCO2 is taken into case. So as you see, PCO2 is now present at this particular uh, partial pressure at equilibrium, right. So with that, uh, I am going to end today's session. Uh, again, uh, the crux of the issue is we transformed using pH and alkalinity. We ended up calculating CO3 total and then use the relevant aspects in the closed system. But in the open system, what were we up to? We calculated pH and CO3 total. Uh, pardon me, H total and CO3 total from uh, pH and alkalinity and then use that to have the partial pressure of CO2, why is that? Because it is an open system and then calculate the relevant species. 
obviously in this example I did not plug in PO4 total so I could have plugged in PO4 total and so on and so forth. But here one case is that you know if I remove the uh, pH because let us say pH is not going to be constant when partial pressure is let us say changed calculate from mass and charge balance. So, I run that. So, obviously as I see here this is something I should have done earlier uh, the pH is not going to stay the same which was the initial case earlier but the pH is going to fall. Why is it going to fall? Because I increase the or introduce a new variable in terms of partial pressure of CO2 as in let me just clarify that. So, earlier the pH was 7 right and there is a given alkalinity and then I end up calculating you know the relevant CO3 total and H total which I assume random values I guess right uh, which may be uh, given time we will do that later and then I plugged in the value for partial pressure of CO2 and then ran Vimintech and what did I get? I got a pH of around 5.3 right. But if I calculate CO3 total or not CO3 total pardon me the alkalinity should still be the same right. So, that is what we see here and uh, with that I will end uh, today's session and thank you.